Why Japan's $20 billion airport could be underwater soon. Japan has surpassed its peer countries by building the first offshore airport. However, according to worrying news reports, there is also a risk of sinkage. If you are interested in knowing about this architectural marvel, the existential threat, then this video is for you. Stay tuned and don't forget to watch. Happy watching! Background Kansai International Airport, which opened in September 1994 off the coast of Senshu in Osaka Bay, is the world's first offshore airport built entirely of man-made materials. It meets all the global standards for a true 24-hour operational airport, with numerous 4,000-meter-long runways, and facilitates flights between 23 countries and 82 cities, with 194.6 normal service flights per day and around 30 million passengers per year. It has grown into a key Asian transportation hub, with roughly 20 million passengers passing through it last year. There are two terminals at the airport, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2, with a length of 1.7 kilometers. Terminal 1 was designed by Italian architect Renzo Piano and is the world's longest airport terminal. All Nippon Airways, Japan Airlines, and Nippon Cargo Airlines all have international hubs at the airport, which also serves as a hub for Peach, Japan's first international low-cost carrier. In 2020, Kansai was first recognized as Asia's best airport staff, the world's best airport staff, and the world's best airport for baggage delivery. The airport was built to relieve travelers who had previously been forced to use Tokyo's airport, which is located 40 miles outside of the capital and has separated facilities for international and domestic flights, adding to the inconvenience for passengers. The Kansai Airport, which serves Osaka and its two neighbors, Kobe and Kyoto, mixes both type of flights. However, few would call it a success tale. The airport's construction was twice as much expected, and it has yet to turn a profit. In fiscal year 1999, it lost $1.4 billion. The construction of the 1,275-acre island in an earthquake-prone area posed unique technological obstacles. A quake devastated Kobe and some areas of Osaka the year after it opened. The airport, much to the astonishment of many, escaped the quake with just a little damage. Officials anticipated sinkage would be a long-term issue because the airport is built on a rather soft land. It was originally expected to settle no more than 38 feet during the next 50 years, but that limit has been surpassed in just 20-odd years. Construction The Terminal 1 building has a four-story main structure as well as north and south wings. The lobbies for domestic departures and arrivals are on the second floor. The international arrival lobby is on the first floor, while the international departure lobby is on the fourth story. Arriving bus stations are on the fourth level, while departing bus stops are on the first, making ground transportation very convenient. The Terminal 2 LCC low-cost carrier terminal, which opened in October 2012, was upgraded in January 2017, features the country's first smart security lanes and walk-through duty-free businesses. There are restaurants and souvenir shops, as as well as housing in rest areas, in the terminal building and aero plaza. The airport is on the verge of collapsing. The race at the bottom is upon the Kansai International Airport, which serves the Japanese city of Osaka and is located on two artificial islands in Osaka Bay. Kansai has plummeted 38 feet since it was opened in 1994. In one aspect, Japan's second largest airport, which opened six years ago, is far ahead of expectations. It is falling into the ocean much more quickly than expected. The much-touted gateway to Western Japan, spread out on an artificial island that cost $17 billion to develop, is settling 44 years ahead of time. Experts declare that everything is under control, but their assurances aren't enough to quell rising worry and rage. At a recent session of Parliament's Transportation Committee, opposition MP Yoshiaki Takagi remarked, How much longer will it last? This cast doubt on the airport's security and reputation. The islands of Kansai were expected to settle evenly or recede over a 50-year period until settling at 13 feet above sea level, according to engineers. In the event of a breach in an encircling seawall, this is the minimum elevation required to avoid flooding. Within six years, portions of the first of the two islands reached that milestone. The seawall was raised for at least $150 million. Although some engineers project that sections of the two man-made islands may sink by 2056, the islands might sink another 13 feet, bringing them to sea level. Workers excavated beneath the passenger terminal, put iron plates beneath the hydraulic tracks, and lifted columns in stages to rescue the airport from the sea. Even with these projections in place, the airport is likely to settle for centuries, all but at a far slower rate. 
can size jacks will be readjusted every two years if necessary, and engineers can check for tilt on each of the 900 column. Engineers are concerned not only about the rate of sinking, but also about its unevenness. Different sections of the Kansai Islands are sinking at different rates. On Island 1, in the heart of Kansai's passenger terminal, engineers found that the basement level had a higher degree of sinking than the building ends. To avoid cracks and buckles, workers paved the airport runways with asphalt rather than concrete to compensate for uneven sinking elsewhere. The amount the airport had sunk was investigated in a study published in the Journal of Geotechnical and Geoenvironmental Engineering. The airport had to attain a minimum elevation of 4 meters above sea level, according to the design specifications, which would still prevent flooding if the seawall is damaged. The first island had already reached this level by 2015, according to the research, while the second island was expected to do so between 2023 and 2026. Six. Furthermore, the two islands would reach sea level by 2067 and 2058, respectively, and by 2058 and 2100. The issue stems from a discrepancy between the planning engineers, projections, and the sinking rate experience in reality. Yukako Honda, Kansai's airport's communications director, described this in an article in Air and Space magazine. When the Kansai airport was built, the amount of soil to reclaim the area was established based on the necessary ground level and subsidence estimation over 50 years following the construction. In comparison to the billions of pounds of strain generated by the 69.5 square miles of fill constructing the islands, the weight of hangars and parking garages has little influence on sinking. According to Honda, a fully loaded Airbus A380 with fuel and people weighs less than 0.0003% of the weight of the reclaimed soil. Parts of the airport have sunk more than we thought, said Naoki Hayashi, the engineering department's general manager at Kansai International Airport Co. There is nothing we can do to prevent it from sinking. $252 million is being sought to build underground walls to prevent water from leaking into the terminal buildings and refueling tanks in what they hope would be the ultimate precautionary measure. The most important section of the airport is at the basement of the terminal, and if water creeps in there, the entire airport ceases to function, Hayashi explained. A history of inconvenience If a typhoon hits Kansai directly, the water breaks over the city's sea wall. The city's runways and buildings will be submerged. For instance, Typhoon Debbie impacted the airport on September 4th, 2018, after seawater's surges inundated the island. The airport had to halt operations, runways were damaged, and the water went up to the engines of several planes. The situation was made worse when a big tanker collided with the bridge connecting the airport to the mainland, essentially stranding those who remained. All flights were cancelled at the airport until September 6, when Prime Minister Shinzo Abe declared that the airport would restart limited domestic operations. After repairs to the Kansai Airport Line and Nankai Airport Line were finished on 18th of September 2018, train services to the airport resumed, with the airport resuming regular operations in October 1, 2018. On April 8, 2019, repairs to the damaged part of the Skygate Bridge are were finally completed, totally restoring traffic to and from the mainland. What options did the authorities have? Of course, just like the previous estimate, the casual weight of additional sinking may differ from what is currently estimated. However, as part of our research, this may increase. Lifting the buildings is another safeguard. Metal plates can be inserted into the foundation columns to offset the sinking, as previously discussed. This is done every two years, according to Air and Space magazine, with each column being reviewed and changed as needed. That's all for today's video. We hope the video would be informative and you liked it. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Do give us your suggestions in the comment section as well. Have a great time. Goodbye.